Hi, I'm Catherine Levesque. I'm a writer. I have 35 novels on Amazon and counting. And today we're going to talk about one of my very best sellers, um, The Dark One, Dark Knight. Um, I've also decided that we're going to call these chats the uh, the bedside chats. You know how FDR had his fireside chats? This is the bedside chat because I'm sitting on my bed as I'm doing this. So, so let's just all pretend we're like, you know, sitting around just chatting and... Uh, and uh, this will be a lot of fun. Oh, and if I shake the bed, I'm sorry. So my camera's going to shake. So it's not an earthquake. I know I'm, I'm living in California, but it's not an earthquake. Anyway, let's talk about um, The Dark One, Dark Knight. Um, that novel takes place in 1486, and it takes place immediately after the Battle of Bosworth Field. Now, if you know your history or you've read anything about that, um, the Battle of Bosworth Field was when um, Henry Tudor, became king, um, defeating Richard III. Um, it was a nasty, bloody, horrible, you know, battle. Um, one of those, I, I think, a Civil War battle. I mean, it really was when you think about it. You, you got two guys who lay the claim to the throne, and, uh, you know, it's going to tear the country apart. So all that aside, let's put that aside. But anyway, um, if you have read The White Lord of Wellsborn yet, um, this book takes place a year after that. Um, at the end of The White Lord of Wellsborn was the Battle of Bosworth, and it explained why Gaston de Roos um, became a traitor, because he supported Henry III, and then now he's supporting, I'm sorry, <laughs> Richard III. A lot of thirds there. Um, he, he supported Richard III, and then he ended up supporting Henry Tudor, which he swore he'd never do. But there's a lot of circumstances in um, The White Lord of Wellsborn that kind of explain why he did what he did. Um, so Gaston is now branded a traitor. Uh, Henry Tudor sends him up north to kind of act as the constable of Yorkshire because, you know, as we all know, that. And I did not turn my phone off again. You'd think I would learn by now. That's nobody important. Anyway. Here I am. Um, so he goes north to um, subdue, at least keep Yorkshire under control um, for Henry Tudor. He ends up at an enemy's castle um, called Mount Holyoke. And in there he finds, I would say, a house of horrors. If you've read the book, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't read it yet, listen to this. So Gaston shows up. There are four women and two young boys living there. The lady of the house uh, is named Lady Remington Stoneley. Her husband was at Bosworth Field, who is in, and her husband, Guy Stoneley, is now in the Tower of London as a traitor. You know, he lost, he got thrown in the tower. His wife stayed at their castle, and so now Gaston, um, you know, is lord of the castle. Her three sisters live there, her son and her husband's cousin, Charles. Um, Gaston really thinks he's going in there, you know, enemy castle. He He's going to be on his guard. His intent is to turn Mount Holyoke into a Windsor of the North, in a sense. He wants it to be a training ground for Henry. Um, he's got crown troops there. He's going to be training. So, you know, he wants it to be a very functional military um, installation. Uh, military is all Gaston knows. He he doesn't think in any other terms. Probably out of any character I've ever written, Gaston is the most rigid. Um, you know, there's the knighthood and, and nothing else, essentially, for him. Um, he doesn't trust anybody. He doesn't like anybody. He doesn't make friends. You know, he's just kind of this sad... Sad character, I, I, I think. Um, you know, he, he's probably the biggest hero I've got as far as his size goes. Um, you know, Gaston's about 6'8", probably 300 pounds. You know, you put all that armor on him, he's 400 pounds. You know, he's a very, very big guy. Um, so he goes into Mount Holyoke and um, immediately thinks he's going to have, you know, fight the... the, the the family's still living there. He's going to have to subdue him. Well, it's it's a huge surprise to him when Lady Remington tells him, you know, basically, I'm loyal to you because you have saved me from my husband. He has no idea what she means. 
doesn't believe her, of course, but we come to find out through the course of the story that um, Guy Stonely, basically, I mean, he's just, he's the worst kind of abuser. Abused his wife, beat her, raped her, raped her sisters. One of her sisters got pregnant. He, you know, gave the baby away, didn't want it around. Um, you know, horrible, depraved man. Just, just a really horrible, depraved man. So as Gaston begins to understand this about Remington, um, he begins to see things in her that he appreciates. And from appreciation, it turns to fondness. From fondness, it turns to love. It's a real process with him because he's never known anything other than warfare. So so the emotion of love for him is, is really uh, an unknown factor. Um, so the entire story is really about how two really messed up people emotionally find each other and, and fix each other. Um, because the love that Remington and Gaston have for each other is just, you know, it's beyond description. It's just something so intense and so powerful. And, you know, we've got two major problems though. Number one, Gaston is married. And number two, Remington is married. So, you know, that's, that's a major issue. Um, in this day and age, it would be as easy as getting a divorce back then. Divorce was not done. Divorce from the Catholic Church, first of all, only a man can instigate it. Secondly, he, if he's instigating it against his wife, um, he has to prove that she's either a, a Satan worshiper. You know, it, it had to be something really, really horrible in the eyes of the church. You can't just say, I'm tired of her, I don't love her, whatever. Couldn't do that. So now we're instigating divorce from Gaston's side. Gaston wants to instigate it against his wife, who is just this horrendously horrific terrible woman you want her to die and he also wants to instigate remingtons against Guy. now there is a real issue because Guy is a cunning sly foxy son of a bitch so gaston has got to deal with this guy he's got to deal with his wife who's a true um and it's really just the struggle of two people who love each other who are destined to be together and how they eventually come together. Do they come together? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the end chapter is uh, their wedding. So yeah, they do come together, but that journey from point A to point B, it's a hell of a journey. And if you have not read this book, you need to read it because it is, I think just a perfect example of the triumph of the human spirit and the human spirit of love. Um, and it was just, it's a joy to write. It has been my bestseller. Um, everybody, most everybody loves it. Um, it's a very long book and it was also in that group that I typed up on the old computer that I lost and that thank God I had it printed up in hard copy. So it had to be re retyped. Um, I never really thought it would see the light of day. I'm so glad it did. And if you've read it, I hope you loved it. And if you haven't read it, please do. Um, as always, you can check out all of my books on Amazon or at www.catherinelevesque.com. I hope you visit my website. I hope you subscribe to my blog because I pretty much post daily and chat about all sorts of, cri all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, that's about it for now. Thank you for joining me and happy reading.